Cynthia Varela with the Controller's Office. Um, as an introduction to the two uh, error reports that were re recently issued by the Controller's Office, uh, uh, the Controller's Office would like the committee to bear in mind uh, the following things. The primary issue um, that the Controller's Reports uh, was trying to emphasize is the expediency of contract awards. The intent of ERA is, uh, to stimulate the economy is not met when contracts are not awarded quickly to enable project starts and spending of ERA funds. The audits focused on a specific point in time, several months after the ERA grants included in our audit period were awarded. And since these awards are on a cost reimbursement basis, it means that only a portion of the grant funds had been expended, billed for reimbursement, and received. So as noted in our report, as of January 31st, 2010, DOT was awarded $40.8 million. They had billed $1.8 million and received $1.1 million. And as of December 31st, 2009, for Public Works, the entire department was awarded $70.65 million, uh, 70 million, excuse me, had billed $5.24 million and was reimbursed $1.6 million. As of those specific points in time, both departments had expended less than 10% of the total funding awarded. As required by the OMB, the methodology for collecting, excuse me, for calculating the number of jobs created and retained, um, it's intended to report full-time equivalents, FTEs, that were paid with ERA funds for a specific point in time, a snapshot, if you will, and represents a conversion of hours worked to FTEs to equate to a single job. We would expect that subsequent to the audit period, we reviewed the amount of ERA billings for reimbursement and receipts as well as the number of jobs created or retained would hopefully increase. Also, these audits reflect the activities of only two departments that have received ERA awards and are not necessarily reflective of citywide results nor the current impact on jobs created or retained with ERA funding. So with the specific um, issues that we noted, starting with the report on DOT, um, our review our audit reviewed the processes that DOT had in place to ensure compliance with ERA requirements and that funded programs and projects are implemented efficiently and will result in the intended outcomes. <coughs> As of our audit period, DOT had been awarded seven ERA grants, six through the Federal Highway Administration and one through the Federal Transit Administration for a total of $40.8 million. The ERA grants were to fund a variety of transportation-related activities, such as the installation of left turn arrows, LED traffic si signals, as well as new traffic signals, enhancing the transit priority system, and improving highway rail grade crossing systems and surfaces. Overall, we found that DOT is familiar with federal funding requirements and has established processes for contracting, project management, and accounting. Um, Although ERA requirements are very similar um, in some respects to other federal grant programs, there are some additional requirements mandated by the Recovery Act. And in that regard, DOT has processes in place to ensure that ERA funds are recorded and expenditures tracked for reimbursement and the progress of the project is monitored through completion. Um, additionally, there are controls to ensure that ERA funds are expended in compliance with the Recovery Act and required data is tracked and reported to the appropriate grant or agency. There were some areas that we noted that could be improved, though, with DOT's processes. The contracting processes that are followed by the department may not be sufficiently streamlined to ensure that ERA funds are expended quickly to promote job creation and retention and stimulate the economy. For example, we noted four out of six federal highway projects were not sent out for bid proposals until at least seven months after the notice to proceed from the state or, um, and the Federal Highway Administration. Construction is estimated to start about 12 months after the projects were um, given the authority to proceed and the city accepted the funding. Number two, the process to report accurate job estimates timely may not be adequate. Uh, our, what we noted is that the jobs data that was, was initially based on budgeted positions and not actual hours worked and reporting deadlines were missed for some projects in November 2009 and March 2010. Um, item number three, processes for transparent and accurate tracking of ERA expenditures need strengthening. We noted that the project manager does not review expenditure information to ensure all costs are billed. Uh, we noted some material costs were not billed because DOT did not have supporting documents from uh, the General Services Department and noted that some meal costs were not billed for reimbursement. 
Other examples included era numbered work orders. Uh, while they were established by DOT, field employees continued to use non-era numbered work orders. As a result, those labor costs charged to the non-era work orders were not captured for billings. Item four, at the time of approving grant applications, decision makers may not be aware of the project's full cost, the indirect and in, excuse me, direct and indirect cost, and that billing for indirect costs may not be recovered through the ERA grant. Um, typically, the indirect costs are claimed at the last billing uh, when the cap rate has been approved, and that's if there's any remaining funds available on the grant. With DOT's ERA projects, this was part of a larger citywide allocation for ERA-funded transportation projects. Um, in the CEO's July 2009 report to the mayor and the council, it indicated that direct cost and fringe benefits would be reimbursed to the city and that the grants would maximize the reimbursement of indirect costs to the extent possible and there would be no impact to the city's general fund. Uh, but we found no formal report detailing all of the city costs that would actually be incurred. And lastly, um, the current processes do not ensure that the general fund is reimbursed timely for front funding, nor ensure that MICLA cash flow reports are submitted timely to the CEO. We noted about a million dollars in direct labor and material costs were reimbursed by Caltrans prior to January 2010 and was deposited into the MICLA fund, but not transferred to the general fund. Uh, the general fund transfer should be made monthly, but given the staffing shortages that DOT has experienced, the CAO um, indicated to us that bi-monthly transfers are also acceptable. Uh, as far as the MICLA cash flow reports, departments are required to submit those to the CAO on a bi-monthly basis. Uh, as you know, the CAO relies on this information to estimate the amount of MICLA commercial paper that may need to be issued. And as of our field work date, DOT had not submitted any MICLA cash flow reports to the CAO. Are there any questions on that, or would you like me to proceed to deep? To uh, why don't you walk us through the, the entirety of it? Okay. Um, with Public Works, uh, we focused our audit focused on those bureaus within uh, DPW that had been awarded ERA funds, and that was the Bureau of Engineering, the Bureau of St Street Services, and Bureau of Sanitation. We also included the Bureau of uh, Contract Administration in our audit, since it has responsibility for ensuring compliance uh, with some ERA requirements. Similar to uh, what we noted in the DOT audit, um, or similar to what we did in the DOT audit, we reviewed the processes and the, that the bureaus had in place to ensure compliance with their requirements and that funded programs and projects are implemented efficiently and will result in the intended outcomes. As of our audit period, um, the Department of Public Works had been awarded 15 ERA grants for a total of $70.6 million. The ERA grants uh, were used to fund bridge and street resurfacing, stormwater and sidewalk improvements, and adding bicycle safety grates to selected catch basins. Overall, we found that Public Works is very familiar with federal requirements, funding requirements, and has established processes for contracting, project management, and accounting, and generally has processes in place to assure that uh, ERA funds are expended in accordance with the Recovery Act and federal guidelines for calculating jobs created or retained are followed. Again, we did note some areas that could be improved. Processes need to be strengthened to ensure transparent, accurate, and segregated tracking of ERA funds and related expenditures. Um, as an example, at the time of the audit, the process for establishing ERA accounts by the Bureau of Sanitation did not ensure that ERA funds can be readily identified. Uh, this, uh, the sanitation, uh, sanitation had been using a temporary account, and um, uh, at the time of our uh, completing the audit, they had corrected that and were, have since uh, started using a separate account for those funds. Um, in some cases, sanitation work orders were not identified with the prescribed error numbering, and some similar but individual error projects are combined by street services under one project name or code. Item number two, the process for billing costs for reimbursement could be improved. Uh, for example, we noted that Public Works does not bill based on incurred cost, although the state agreements for the two stormwater projects um, do allow that. Um, we noted that direct cost may be billed as indirect cost. Um, we noted an example where equipment rental uh, that was uh, uh, recorded as a direct charge was not billed by street services as such. Billings for reimbursements are not always submitted as early as possible. 
Uh, we noted some billings did not include all costs, such as um, survey support work performed by the Bureau of uh, Engineering for Street Services, and that Street Services used uh, an outdated material cost rate schedule. Um, since our uh, field work was completed, the department has indicated those items have been corrected. Uh, again, we noted that contracting processes may need to be streamlined in order to ensure that funds are expended quickly to promote job creation and stimulate the economy. Some of the projects have taken many months to award the contracts and start construction. Item number four, the process to ensure jobs data is accurately report, reported requires improvement. Uh, in an October 2009 report to Caltrans and the CAO, Street Services used job retention estimates from a July 2009 report to the mayor and city council instead of actual hours worked to determine the number of era funded jobs. And then uh, similar to what we found in the DOT audit is at the time of approving grant applications, decision makers may not be aware of projects full cost um, and that's we're mainly concerned with the indirect cost outside of um, fringe benefits and that billing for indirect costs may not be recovered through the era grant. Those are the um, primary issues that we noted. Um, I know there's some areas uh, that you mentioned where there obviously could be greater efficiencies. Are there, are there any very substantial areas where we're actually concerned about a result that could be dramatic, such as not fully funding uh, uh, some or all of our projects or not getting funding in the future because of how we've performed? Um, you know, when we talked with, the purpose of these audits was to come in early in the process so that we could identify any potential risks just right. to prevent that from happening in the future so that we would bring this to the attention of the departments and they could mitigate any of those things um, early on. Um, when we spoke with the departments, um, they were quite comfortable that given the time frame for the grant awards, which is sometimes to complete the projects up to three years, um, that they would meet those timelines in completing the projects, even though there was a so, slow start. Um, the purpose of our bringing it up was just to make sure that, um, despite the slow start, that we continue working um, quickly to get those projects done. And as new funds come in, that improvements be made um, to hopefully expedite that startup process. So hopefully with, with the improvements that you've flagged, uh, we're not anticipating any of those uh, you know, dramatic uh, negative results. N not based on what we've heard from the departments, right. Okay, well I'd like to ask for uh, a report back uh, in, in 30 days from, from the, uh, the CAO and the CLA and controller's office. And let me uh, give you a few questions that I'd like uh, to come back from the controller and CAO. Uh, one, the audit analyzed the issues with numbers that were available in March. I wonder if we could have that analyzed with uh, more recent numbers and more recent information so we can know exactly where we are in the process. Um, what the total, total dollar amount is in, in RF funds granted to the city and what percentage of the funds have been expended. Um, also, if we get updated statistics to let us know where we are in the job creation and retention um, process so we have a more accurate and timely picture. Um, also, whether the departments are currently in compliance with all of their reporting requirements or whether the CAO needs to work more closely with each department on each project to make sure things are done in the proper fashion. Um, which are projects uh, specifically didn't bill ac accurately and what the total dollar amount is of the, that cost and which of those costs can still be recovered from the federal government. Um, whether the city's on par with other municipal recipients in terms of implementation of their federal Im uh, infrastructure projects or whether we're behind uh, other typical municipalities and uh, what other impediments uh, departments face in their implementation of ARA funded projects and whether uh, what specifically uh, uh, ARA presents in terms of unique problems. And also for the CAO and CLA, um, given the city's existing uh, contractual procedures for construction projects, what steps the city could take in expediting the award process without jeopardizing federal and state compliance and 
the dictates of good project management? Could the city reasonably streamline this process uh, in a timely manner? And lastly, if each department has uh, adhered to city council adopted uh, evaluation principles in terms of the projects uh, for which grant funding is being requested. Um, you think we'd be able to get the answers to all those questions within within 30 days in a report back? I think we can. And uh, just to um, uh, sort of offer some of the numbers that are some answers to some of the questions you just asked. We did present to the committee with a report um, today uh, talking about uh, giving some information on the jobs um, created and some of the expenditures uh, thus far. Um, we do want to um, commend the controller's office for uh, doing the analysis and certainly as we look through the recommendations uh, that have been presented, uh, uh, they are appropriate and, and there are issues and things that we make sure that we need to make sure that we address and, and follow up through. So in the report, we do uh, provide some information on uh, the number of jobs created uh, through the period. I think one of the um, sticking points, so to speak, uh, was prior to December, the end of December 2009, there was a different methodology of reporting jobs uh, versus afterwards when OMB uh, issued new reporting requirements. Uh, and that has uh, raised some questions as far as actual job numbers, what has been created, retained, et cetera. Uh, so in our report, we do provide you some numbers. Uh, and based on those projects uh, that were covered in both DOT uh, and public works, we do have some slightly higher job numbers. Uh, and we do provide some information on the expenditures thus far. I think uh, we provide some of the answers to some of your questions, but we'll be happy to follow up within 30 days uh, on the balance of those as well. Right, and I've just seen that the physical piece of paper, obviously, yeah. just coming from <laughs> council. I haven't uh, yeah. had a chance to look it over, and uh, uh, neither did my colleagues, although they're not here for this this committee hearing. So, should we make it uh, a hearing in two weeks? Is that too quickly, or or should we just do it a month from now? What What's your timetable? Because it looks like you have some of this information. We already. have some of the information. I think your questions on the contracting process and, and streamline efforts, that might take a little bit more time. And so probably a 30-day window to address all of your questions would probably be more appropriate. Okay, so we'll, we'll plan on that. Uh, do you have some comments yeah, as well? Yeah, I was just um, asking for 30 days too. That would give us ample time to look at what is provided today by CAO in terms of the most recent numbers. And uh, if, if we can include in that uh, the, the responses to the controller's audit by each department, uh, that would also be, be helpful. And uh, I don't know if we have uh, any speakers uh, on this item. If there's no one that wishes to speak, uh, I think that'll be the direction. And uh, we'll continue this for, this for 30 days. And we are adjourned. Wait, can I get a copy of the report?